Okay, today we're going to cover a few grassy weeds that you might find in your landscape at this time of year. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is right here. This is goosegrass. Here we see an, a nice example of a goosegrass plant and this uh, finger-like seed head that's typical of goosegrass. It almost looks like a, a wagon wheel if you look at it from the top down and that has spokes that come out. And this goosegrass plant, it really likes to germinate in hard or compacted areas. Maybe if you have an area in your yard where there's a lot of traffic or along sidewalks or, or walkways or pathways. And we see a lot of it, you know, coming up along this walkway right here, which is pretty typical um, for goosegrass to do this. And so this is a summer annual grassy weed, which typically we actually want to control this with a pre-emergent application back in uh, February, March time frame. And we talked about that earlier this year. And this is one that it's, it's, you have to actually follow up with another pre-emergent application later in the spring, maybe around May. So for the ones that you've missed with pre-emergent or if you didn't get to put pre-emergent out this year, not a lot of chemical options for the homeowner. So a lot of times we just, there's some tools where you can easily uh, hand pull weeds and if you just go right over the base of it with some of these tools and pull them out or you can use a screwdriver or a knife stick it in and pull it out but not a lot of chemical options here if you use something like a glyphosate or a roundup just remember it's going to kill the uh, bermuda grass or, or fescue that's around the area too so be careful when using that there we're going to look over here at a few other grasses uh, there's another one that's really typical another summer annual grass and this one is called crabgrass. And sometimes folks can get goosegrass and crabgrass confused. But you see, if you look at this one from the base, it doesn't have that spoke-like wagon wheel appearance from it. And usually you can see a lot of hairs at the base of it if you have what's called large or hairy crabgrass. Or sometimes you can look down and it'll be smooth. We call that smooth or small crabgrass. Whichever one you have, if you have crabgrass, it does like to uh, germinate at this time of year. Use, even, even back into April and May in some years, it can germinate and come up in your yard. So similar to the goosegrass problem, this is something we try to control with a pre-emergent uh, back in February, come up with another application maybe in May, depending on the year and the conditions. And for those that we've missed with the pre-emergent, we can come back in with a couple of post-emergent products. Now, for, for both goosegrass and crabgrass, in the past we could use MSMA, but that is no longer available for homeowners. If it is still in your shed or, or in your garage, you can still use it legally, but you can just no longer buy it. Now, that did not completely control crabgrass or goosegrass. It would still take repeated applications, but it was something that we could use. So today, if you're going to go to the store, you're looking for a product called Quinclorac, or active ingredient Quinclorac and lots of companies uh, have this in their products you just look on the label uh, look for quinclorac a lot of times they actually mix it with a, a broadleaf herbicide as well it's kind of an all-in-one or a three or four way type product that'll take care of broadleaf weeds and grassy weeds such as crabgrass doesn't have great activity on crabgrass or goosegrass and it's going to take repeated applications on your crabgrass not something you can just spray once and not have to worry about again so another tough weed we have to fight here in Oklahoma.